when we say compound interest we get interest on interest what does it mean if i deposit right now 100 rupees at 20 percent per annum for first year on 100 rupees i will get 20 rupees as interest and next year second year we will get interest on 100 rupees plus 20 rupees we will get on 120 rupees 20 percent if we say simple interest every year it's same in compound interest first year on 100 i will get 20 next year on 120 i'll get 20 percent i'm going on so simply in compound interest we get interest on interest every year it keeps on increasing question is person deposited 60,000 rupees at 20 percent rate of interest so first year's interest is 12,000 but next year he will get on 60,000 as well as on 12,000 so next year he gets on 20 percent on 72,000 what it comes out is 144 now next year he will get on 72,000 plus this thing he gets on 86,400 so what all we get 17280 simply what we did first year we deposited 60,000 rupees 20 percent rate of interest 12,000 next year on 60,000 plus 12,000 72,000 we get this thing Next year on 72,000 plus 14,400, this thing. So amount at the end of three year, he gets plus 17280, that is 10368. This is the total amount he gets back. In the bank, he had deposited 60,000 rupees. So interest he gets is previous years this plus interest bank here deposited 60,000 so final compound interest is this thing now if I say if I say formula here is amount we get back at the end of n years if p rupees is deposited at r percent rate of interest 60,000 deposited at 20% per annum for 3 years 60,000 into 120 by 100 into 120 by 100 3 times so what all we get here 3 zeros cancel 60 into 1728 103680 I repeat if we deposit P rupees at R percent rate of compound interest for N years the total amount we get back is 60,000 deposited at 20% rate of interest for 3 years. 60,000, now why this formula works? First year it got increased by 20%, next year again on trade by 20%, next year again. So this is the amount I get back. Amount I get back is 103680. I deposited 60,000. So interest I got is 43680 compound interest is 43680 now in the same formula P into bracket 1 plus R by 100 raised to N N is number of years and R is rate of interest per annum. Now, the same formula will become R by 2 and 2L. If simply, if simply, it is calculated half yearly. If it is calculated half yearly means if compounded half yearly formula will be this thing because r is for one year so for half year will be r by 2 
one year how many half years two and if it's compounded quarterly one quarter four years so this will become this will be the formula if it's compounded quarter if the interest is calculated quarterly it will be 1 plus r by 100 if this is quarterly this is for half yearly and this is obviously if it's annually now person deposited p rupees for one year at 10 percent rate of interest so simple interest what all we get p by 10 look simple interest you do monthly annually it does not change but compound interest p into bracket 1 plus r by 2 raised to 100 reason being it's calculated half yearly so if it's r is 10 half years 5 one half year one year two half years so what all we get p into bracket 1 plus 1 by 20 bracket square what all we get p into bracket 1 plus sorry p we get here 21 by 20 21 by 20 bracket square so which is nothing but 441 by 400 p this is the total amount I get minus P principal. So compound interest is 41 by 400 P. I quickly repeat. If I deposit P rupees at R percent per annum to be calculated half yearly. So it becomes 2. 1 year how many half years. Rate of interest was 10. So for half years 5. 1 year 2 half years. This is the total amount I get back minus principal P this is the compound interest this is the compound interest simple interest we already got p rupees for one year 10 percent rate of interest simple interest we got that compound interest we got this now difference between the compound interest and simple interest 25 p upon 400 is 25 so p is nothing but what 10,000 compound interest minus simple interest what is it p is 10,000 principal is 10,000 smarter way quickly check out the smarter way let's say if I deposited 100 rupees 10 percent simple interest so simple interest is nothing going to be 10 but if I say compound first 100 rupees half years interest is going to be 5 rupees next half year this was first half second half on 105 half year we get 5.25 so total compound interest we got 10.25 on 100 rupees 10 percent rate of interest simple interest is 10 compound interest first half year 100 rupees pay first half year we got 5 next half we will get on 100 plus 5 105 half year 5.25 so compound interest we got 10.25 simple interest is 10 compound interest is 10.25 so how much extra do I get here compound interest 10.25 simple interest 10 how much is it more is 0.25 now simply if I deposited 100 rupees I get 0.25 rupees more as interest I am getting 25 rupees more so what is the amount deposited 10,000 I repeat what it the smart work was if I deposited 100 10% simple interest for one year simple interest will be 10 compound interest first half year we will get 5 rupees next half year 105 we get this total compound interest 10.25 simple interest is 10 so how much is it more if 100 rupees is deposited 0.5 more 100 rupees 0.25 more 
25 more how many rupees what all we get 10,000 the question says let's say a person deposited p rupees for two years at r percent rate of interest simple interest is given 480 p rupees for two years at r percent so i can say pr upon 100 is 240 now same p rupees if you deposit at r percent rate of interest compound interest this is going to be 49 that is given compound this is the total amount minus principal p into bracket 1 plus 2r upon 100 plus 2r upon 100 plus r square upon 10,000 minus p p plus 2pr upon 100 plus p r square upon 10,000 minus p 499.2 so what we get here is 2 PR upon 100 is 480 already we know this can be broken as PR upon 100 plus R by 100 that is 499.2 this is into so we get PR upon 100 into R by 100 is 19.2 I quickly repeat here what all we did if we deposit p rupees at r percent rate of interest for two years total amount we get this minus bank deposited principal we solve it a plus b bracket square a plus 2 a b upon 100 plus b square minus p so total amount solving the bracket 2 pr upon 100 this minus p 2 pr upon 100 already we know 480 this we broke it so what we get here is PR by 100 into R by 100 is 19.2 now we already know PR by 100 we just got is PR by 100 into R by 100 is 19.2 this value we already know 240 into R by 100 solving it R is going to be 192 upon 24 8% we just got PR upon 100 into R by 100 19.2 simple interest on P rupees for 2 years 480 so for 1 year 240 so we got 2 PR, PR upon 100 240 R by 100 R is 8% put value of R anywhere anywhere we put it here P to 8 upon 100 is 480. So principal is what? 3000. Principal is 3000. Smart work was always there. Let's quickly check out. What we know is simple interest is same every year. Is same every year because it's only interest on interest and first year simple interest and compound interest both are same both are same how it works out let's quickly check out if I deposit 100 rupees if I deposit 100 rupees at 20 percent per annum first year simple interest is also 20 compound interest is also 20 second year simple will again be 20 but compound interest will be on 100 plus 20 so that will be 24 first year simple interest and compound interest same second year onwards compound interest keeps on increasing look at it now two years simple interest and compound interest simple interest given is 480 compound interest is this first year simple is 240 second year also is good it's same every year for two years 480 now first year's compound and simple is same 
So for second year we get this minus this, what all we get? 259. How many rupees extra did we get is 19.2 rupees we got extra. Two years simple interest 480, compound interest this. Simple interest is same every year for two years is, is this, so first year. First year simple and compound are same because both of them are only on principle. But next year, compound interest we get extra. Why do we get extra? It gets on P plus previous year's interest. It comes on principal as well as previous year's interest. So next year we'll be getting interest on principal plus previous year's interest. So on P again we'll be getting 240. On principal we get 240. So what all we get extra is interest on first year's interest. So simply what we studied, quickly check out. Two years simple, two years compound is given. Two years simple, two years compound is given. First year both are same. Second year's compound interest is this minus this. We got 19.2 extra. Why it's extra? On first year's interest, on first year's interest, one year's interest is going to be 19.2. So R we get is 192 upon 24. R is 8% per hour. Simply if two years simple, two years compound interest given, fine. First year same. Second year, what all extra is there? That is the interest on first year's interest for one year. R is 8% per hour. And on P rupees for two years, 8% rate of interest, we get 480. 1630s are principal is 3000. Principal is 3000. The question says two years simple interest is given 720. Compound interest is given this. We know first year both are going to be same. And simple interest is same every year. So what all extra? Second year's compound interest is this. First year's this. 54 rupees extra we get the interest. Why do we get? On this first year's 360 rupees interest. Because first year we got on principal. Next year we got on principal plus 360. So on principal we got 360. What all extra we get? On 360 rupees for one year, rate of interest, I don't know. Interest is 54. So, solving it, R comes out 15%. And on P rupees for two years, R is 15% per annum. Simple interest is 720. Solve it, P comes out. I repeat, two years simple interest, two years compound. Simple interest is same every year, 360. Second year's compound, what is it extra? 54. On first year's interest, for one year, what all extra we get? 54. R is 15%. On P rupees, for two years, rate of interest 15. So principal is 2400. Let's say a person deposits P rupees in the bank. R percent rate of compound interest Amount at the end of three years is 103680 and amount at the end of four years 124416. Look now. Previous year's amount, amount at the end of three years is this and amount at the end of four years is this. So what all we got extra? What all is this extra if we take the difference 124416 minus 103680? What all extra we get here is 20736. Check it 20736. This is why did we get this much extra? At the end of three years it was this, at the end of four years it was this. Simply amount at the end of previous year, this. So fourth year on this, on this for one year, rate of interest we don't know, 
but what interest we got is 20736 it's as simple as this amount at the end of 3 years is this amount at the end of 4 years is this what all is the difference that is the interest for the fourth year so now so on 103680 for one year interest is this if i solve it this will get cancelled so r will come out what is it 20 percent look this shortcut can be used only when difference of one year is there if difference is only of one year we can say but if it's difference of two years or something we cannot use because it's interest on interest amount at the end of three years this amount at the end of four years this difference is this this is the interest for fourth year on one zero three six eight zero for one year so interest is 20 percent the other formula we have got is amount at the end of four years how do we get one plus r by 100 raised to 4 and how do we get amount at the end of 3 years p into bracket 1 plus r by 100 so amount at the end of 4 years is 1 to 4 4 1 6 amount at the end of 3 years this thing if we divide them p gets cancelled we are left out with is 1 plus r by 100 solve it simply what all we get is 12 by 10 that is 6 by 5 if we simplify it keep on dividing you get 12 by 10 so 1 plus r by 100 is this thing r by 100 is 1 by 5 so r is this app can be used anywhere amount at the end of 4 years P into bracket 1 plus R by 100 raised to 4. Amount at the end of 3 years, P into bracket 1 plus R by 100 raised to 3. 4, 3 we divide. We get 12 by 10. Simply 1 plus R by 100 bracket cube cancel. That is 6 by 5. So 1 plus R by 100, R is 20%. This approach can be used anywhere, but the smart approach what we had amount at the end of three years and four years difference this can be used only when difference of one year is there so the question says a certain amount of money triples itself in six years simply it means if i put one rupee after six years i'm going to get three rupees now interest on interest and if i put three rupees after six years again it will triple first it one to triple to three three triple to nine so if i put one after six years it triples three three after six more years it triples to what nine so simply answer is going to be 12 years one triple three three triple nine twice triple if someone is very curious to have a lengthy answer let's check it but simplified answer we had if we deposit P rupees at R percent rate of interest for N years amount we get this. Thing. This is the formula. Now P rupees after 6 years they triple 3P. So PP gets cancelled. We get 1 plus R by 100 raised to 6 is 3. Now question asked is in how many times it will become 9 times? If we put P 1 plus R by 100, how many years? P cancelled. So what we get? 9 is nothing but 3 square. 1 plus R by 100 raised to N. And 3 just we got 1 plus R by 100 raised to 6. So bracket square 1 plus R by 100 raised to N. So we get N is nothing but what 12. I repeat it was not at all needed if we deposit p 1 plus r by 100 raised to 6 it becomes 3p p cancel 1 plus r by 100 raised to 6 is 3 we want p to become 9p 1 plus r by 100 raised to n 
1 plus r by 100, 9 is nothing but 3 square, 3 just we got raised to 6, raised to 2, so n will be simply what we get to simple one step solution if we put one triples to three and six three triples to six six and six total 12 years so if the question given is a certain amount of money doubles in five years in how many years it will become 16 Simple, if we put 1, doubles 2, doubles 4, doubles 8, doubles 16. 5 years, doubles. Furthermore, 5 years, doubles. Furthermore, 5 years and further. So, 5 years plus 5 years plus 5 years, 5 years, 4 times. Simply what we know is doubles. 2 raised to 4, that is 16, 4 times 5, 5 years, so what we will get is 20 years. I repeat, 1 doubles 2 in 5 years, 2 doubles to 4 in 5 years, 4 doubles to 8 in 5 years, 8 doubles to 16, 5, 5, 5, 5, total 20 years, 2 raised to 4, 4 times, so that's what, 16 times. Question was, a certain amount of money doubles in 5 years, in how many years it will become 16 times answer is 20 years if the question given is a certain amount of money triples in 8 years in how many years will it become 81 times let's say 27 times simply 1 rupee will triple to 3 3 will triple to 9 and 9 will triple to 27 8 years Furthermore, 8 years and further 1 rupee will become 3 rupees after 8 years, 3 rupees after furthermore 8 years, 9 and 9 will become triple 27. Simply 27 times was 3 cube. So 8 years 3 times what we will need is 24 years. Total 24 years will be needed. What the question says here, a person took a loan of 3000 rupees, that much loan he took and he paid it back in three equal installments, let's say x rupees, x rupees and x rupees. Now, initial loan is 3000 rupees, so after one month, one year, the interest is going to be 600 rupees, so after one year it will become 3600. Out of that he pays x. So remaining is 3000 minus x. On this, one year rate of interest 20%. Now this year interest is going to be 720 minus x by 5. I repeat, first year on 3000, 20% interest was 600. So amount became this, out of which he paid back x. So now on remaining one year 20%, what all interest we get this. Remaining was 3600. Remaining was 3600 minus x. On that, interest becomes 720 minus x by 5. So it becomes 4320 minus 6 by 5x. Out of that, again he gives x. Remaining was 3600 minus x. This much is the interest, so remaining is this. Out of that he pays x. So now remaining is 4320 minus 11 by 5x. On this one more year interest 20% that is nothing but 1 by 5. So interest is 864 minus 11 by 25x. Remaining was 4320 minus 11 by 5x. Out of that now again interest becomes 864 minus 11 by 25x so if we sum it up we get 5184 minus 66 upon 25x out of that again installment goes x so remaining is 5184 minus 91 by 25x which is 0 i repeat what all we did 
what all we did yeah. was initial loan is 3000 for one year 20% interest was 600 so amount became 3600 out of which first installment x goes so remaining this on this 20% interest this is the interest remaining this plus added interest it becomes 4320 minus 6 by 5x installment x goes so remaining is 4320 minus 11 by 5x on that installment now for one year interest will be this third year this is the interest remaining was this at the end of second year interest for third year this again installment x goes remaining after three installments remaining should be zero so simply now what all we do 5184 minus 91 by 25 x is zero 91 by 25 x 5184 x is 5184 into 25 upon 91 what we know is 91 now it's very rough calculation but if we do 91 fives are 455 we are doing is 5184 upon 91, 91 fives are 455, 455 goes, remaining is 63, so it's very close, very close to this, very close to 57 into 25, it's approximately 25 sevens are 175, 17, 125 and 17, so roughly the each installment was, each installment was 4125 rupees. Each installment was 4125 rupees. Approximately, that's what was the installment.